joined by the lovely Lou Teasdale. Now, me and Lou, um, we know each other from a long, long time ago, don't we? A long time ago. So, you did the styling, uh, not styling, hair styling and makeup yep. for One Direction. Yep. Do you still do any of them now, by the way? Um, no, I, I don't do any of their hair anymore, no. I, no. I stayed with Harry for about a year when he went solo. Yeah. And then... Yeah, it's just really hard because Lux had gone to school by then. So we were really, like, when I knew you, I used to take her around with me, didn't yeah. I, on tour? Yeah. Um, and by the time she was at school, it's a little bit harder. So I was leaving her for longer periods, which I wasn't happy with. And no. so, um, and yeah, I'd started my own business back home and things like that. So it didn't really make sense for me to travel yeah. like that anymore. I can totally get that. It's, ha- it's hard enough being away from them for, like, a few nights, isn't it? Let alone, like, long periods of time. When we when we were when we first met each other, we were in Australia, weren't we? Yeah. Like I, my, I looked out there. I was like, free trip to Australia with One Direction. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, and McFly, of course. But yeah, yeah. I always remember like we would just have so much fun with the McFly wags. Yeah. And we used to call you the McFly wags. <laughs> <laughs> I can yeah. take that. I mean, it was. It was so good, wasn't it? Yeah. And I remember you did. You brought looks with you, and she was an angel. She was like she just like slotted in. Yeah, she really didn't know any different. I think was a big part of it. We'd done it since I had her. Yeah. So she was only maybe two months old, and we went on our first trip, and that was Australia. Um, and Is that just, how old she was? When, not when I was with oh, you. That I was going to say first, no, because she was. Yeah, that was her first experience of touring. And we were very well looked after. She had a little cot and everything on the bus. Oh, did she? Um, and we just always treated it like, you know, for as long as it's working, we'll keep doing it. If we feel like she's not happy or my client's not happy or anyone on the team isn't happy, then we'll reassess the situation. But at the time, I was earning um, and her dad was looking after her. And so we didn't have much choice, to be honest. And it actually worked out, I think, nicer than being a freelancer in London. Yeah. And because we were we were so well looked after. And so she sort of didn't she didn't really know any different. Also, what a nice like you know, when looks looks back when she's older. Well she does, she just watches that she's literally searches baby looks on YouTube. Does she? Does she? (laughs) And sits and watches it. Oh my god, that's amazing. But yeah, I just think, you know, we we honestly had the time of our lives and at the time it felt like this is hard we're tired she doesn't have a routine she hasn't been around any of the children for two weeks and things like that that would freak me out but actually we just had the time of our lives and we were so lucky to do it Mm. and I think that a lot of her personality comes from those days you know she's very very respectful to our elders and when we need to be chilled and not you know and well behaved yeah she's very well behaved yeah because I, I suppose think, for you like she was the entire time you were working she was representing you really because if yeah I imagine you would probably felt did you ever feel pressure that if she was a bit naughty or crying or anything like that did you feel like oh god I'm like I just didn't want it to be a big stress for everyone mm. and you know when you're a mum and you've got the buggy and then all the gear yeah. and all the stuff and she's kicking off and and you're trying to just someone's sort of trying to have a little chat with you and you just can't don't focus yeah do you it. can't you, as you much as you're looking at that person it. yeah and I'm cut you you know and I just never wanted it to feel like a big stress for everybody I just wanted to try and keep it as minimal as possible I used to I used to walk out the house with just the baby on my phone and just deal with it did and you sometimes back home even I would go out with other mums and they'd have all of this stuff Huge they bags. would bring everything with them for any eventuality and I always got used to not doing that because mm. I never wanted you know to be a bit to be making a fuss kind yeah, of thing of but course. it actually made us quite low maintenance and and actually I, I quite liked that in the end always then I would sort of maybe look at others and think that's quite a lot you don't really need to do that yeah it's know? probably set you up really well actually as a pretty chilled mum yeah because you didn't really have much choice other than to just go with the flow yeah and if she needs to kind of sit quiet for a couple of hours in the car she'll just do it that's amazing um, and and but not many kids have been on that many flights and that many journeys so yeah. when there is a couple a year it's it's a thing yeah and I think the parents get stressed and the kids feel that well you panic you panic before you go because you're like yeah. god they're not used to flying yeah. they don't know how to sit still they don't know this yes. whereas look that was like her life yeah so she was just used to it and and actually I think 
It made her relaxed and us relaxed. Mm. And when you first had looks, were you with her dad? Yes. You were. We were together till she was about one. Yeah. Maybe one and a half. And then you two broke up, but you still parent to, like, what would you, yeah, call, do you call, co- it? call it? Yeah, we co-parent? We do co-parent, yeah. Okay. I think that's what it's called. I mean, I assume that's what it's yeah. called. Yeah. We live really close by. Um, we're really good friends. Yeah. And we try and do a lot together. But um, the most important person is Lux. Yeah. Um, to me and to Tom. And so we act us as adults have to get there with it and I think it's I think that she's used to it now we all do things together and so I don't really want that to change and nah. um, so Lux has a really lovely online presence now I have um I put post Cooper I put him on my yeah. Instagram yeah how have you have you had any people kind of giving you a hard time about posting about Lux online I always post her um when she's happy um, when we're doing things together, usually. Yeah. Um, I always do it where she's sort of comfortable with it mm-hmm. rather than um, anything forced. And I think that that comes across. Yeah, it does. When the kids are kind of more models, I think that people will, people will react to that. But what I will say is, you know, we, when we, you know, when we put things up and people have an opinion on it, you know that's what that's kind of what we're here for we're here for that that debate in a way and I'm Mm. and I'm actually open to listening to any comments on my feed and I read a lot of comments on other people's feeds um, especially negative ones because I think that you know people do have their own opinion on things and that's kind of fair enough we don't all agree and especially with children people are protective of children um, and I actually really understand that um, I'm going to do it my way with my daughter yeah. and I expect that person to do it there with, with their kids. But I feel like we're, we're kind of open to, you know, those opinions and it's something that we sort of have to deal with. Yeah, I mean, I think if we put ourselves in that in that situation where we're, mm-hmm. we know we're post about our children and we get those opinions, yeah. that's up to us. Yeah. If we, you know, if we want to do that, that's our choice. Obviously, lockdown's happened and yeah. it's been a really turbulent few months hasn't it yeah and your your start to lockdown was pretty horrific yeah wasn't it because one of your best friends caroline died who is obviously in the public eye yeah um she's a tv presenter very well loved by the nation i guess um and obviously looks will have been close to her as well was she yeah she um it's funny with looks because she's she seems really sort of resilient and um, obviously that happened um, and I mean we had another death actually the year before um, with one of our friends who was again a young girl that was staying with us and we were trying to look after her and not in a good place and I think you know with Lux I think it has made her really caring and um, maybe it's opened her eyes to the world a little bit sooner than I would have liked yeah yeah. I don't want her to be dealing with death at this age it's just not what I want I suppose as well the kind of death as well when it's suicide suicide is you know how do you explain that to a child because the thing is is you can kind of say you know she wasn't very well and she had or you know she had a poly heart or she had a poly head or things like that Uh actually looks is a bit older and then you don't want them to be frightened of having a headache yep. or anything yeah, like course. that, you know. Of um, course. You want them to, you know, it's a lot, there's a lot more to it. And obviously with Caroline, that was on the news. So, so she no could see it, stuff. Really. Also, you know, I was so in the middle of it, you know, in the was house. It your, did your sister find her or did you find her? I did, yeah. You me found and my her. dad and, and Caroline's sister. Wow. And so, you know, looks... Lux was in the house with me, but obviously, you know, a lot of her friends, a lot of her um, management people like that wanted to speak. And I I wanted to speak to people that wanted to know things and make sure that people felt, you know, a part of it. I think when things like that happen, people do want to talk about it because if they're sat at home on their own, not knowing, it's harder for them. And because I was so in the middle of it, Lux was... You know, she was in the house and hearing things and things like that. So I did just, 
I mean, I spoke to a counsellor and her school have been amazing, actually. Her yeah. school um, offered a counsellor for me, for Tom, for Lux, for everybody. They were really, wow. really good. And I didn't expect that. Um, That's amazing. And from she a school. Had, yeah, and she had a couple of sessions at school on Did her she? own. Because what my counsellor was worried about and what um, I would say to anybody with children who is grieving and maybe struggling at home... Like, you're not yourself, you, you, you can't parent how you want to, and not. you're crying, or you're sad and down, and and what happens is, um, and what you need to avoid really is a, is like a role reversal, so looks would start doing things for me, you know, where I might feel frightened in house, she could tell, right? and she was like going ahead and putting the light on, and she would sort of go upstairs first because where the landing's dark and I would be frightened she could kind of tell and she All would do things like that really like in her subconscious and it she was, was almost becoming like the parent so there was the, a role reversal she was and that's lovely but actually what you have to make sure as a parent is that you're the parent yeah and course. there needs to be room for her to say I feel sad and I parent that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, rather than and them someone, looking after you, suppressing yeah, their feelings because down. Because I think that someone who, someone hadn't have explained that to me, I would have allowed that. And then where does that stop? I think anyone would have done. Yeah. I think that's where relationships with, with children and, and parents can sometimes then become unhealthy without you even realising it. When you become reliant on your child. Yeah, definitely. When they do so much for you. Especially as a single parent, there's only me and yeah, her. Yeah, and And so, yeah, you, and you're like, oh, That could that spiral, unhealthy? yeah. yeah, yeah, could, yeah. You know, it could, you could come, become so dependent yeah, on your definitely. child without even knowing you're doing yeah. it. So That's she, actually a really, really key thing mentioned because I bet yeah. a lot of people, yeah. you know, that might be listening to this that are going through mm-hmm. the grieving process with their children, probably yeah. when you've said that are like, God. I've done that. You're a strong woman. <laughs> you are a strong woman. Well, I, I am quite strong, and that is down to my parents. And sometimes I think, well, I am quite glad that it was me that was there and not a couple of our other friends that could have been who I know would have fallen apart. Who, yeah, who and wouldn't the, have. Who were struggling anyway with different things. And actually, I, and actually, I'm not. And so, and I think that's, you know, why I am sort of the person that you know checks on people or has people come and stay when they need somebody and I, I sort of live that because you know you're strong enough to do it and yeah so it's kind of that's what I really you know I really get a lot from that so and I'm it's, sh- no it's not selfish in a way but uh, you know I think that everybody like gets help. something everybody gets something from that yeah it's like part of my growth I think it but I think it's a lovely quality in someone liking to help other people like mm. it's a gorgeous quality and I've no doubt looks will be super proud of you being her mum mm with that type of mentality um thank you um thank you. it was so lovely having you and it's really nice to see you i was thinking when you messaged me god we just haven't seen each other for i know years. i know and you literally when you messaged back it was like you it was like my best friend texting back i was like oh yeah <laughs> <Hiya. laughs> <Like, "Hello." laughs> <Hello. laughs> um, and then you're just like you know me i'll do that I'm, I'm chill. ask me whatever yeah, whatever <laughs> um and I was just like, hi, you know, but <laughs> definitely not a girl. Um, but no, thank you so much. Thanks um, for it was so, me. so lovely to chat to you. You too. <laughs>